in one of its first significant actions of the new year of 2010, South Gloucestershire Council discreetly removed the endangered silver birches in the high street. The council had threatened to remove them in October 2009, but a public outcry and a petition got the trees a last minute reprieve. Now they are gone, removed as furtively as possible. Am I cynical? Yes, towards the council. But not as cynical as the council is towards the public. This January has seen a prolonged period of severe weather and sub-zero temperatures. The volunteers of the High Streets Lights Association were not able to remove the Christmas tree and lights on Sunday the 10th of January. The council was not able to get its refuse collection contractors, CETA, to collect any black ban refuse from Wednesday the 6th of January to Saturday the 9th of January inclusive. Here is a line of bins filmed on Tuesday the 10th of January that have been out on the streets since the previous Friday. They were emptied the following day, four collection days late. However, despite all the important services failing, the council did manage to attend to the non-urgent removal of two relatively small silver birches, despite the severe weather. They were still in situ on Wednesday the 6th of January. Perhaps the sand that was scattered generously around the Wildings area was more about preventing falls by the workmen who were due to turn up than any consideration for the public. By Sunday the 10th of January the trees were gone. Notice how the area where the trees were is now enclosed in safety barriers, whereas the allegedly dangerous pavement, which was uneven because of the tree roots, never had such treatment, not even a warning sign. It was Councillor Maggie Tyrell who claimed that there had been a number of accidents in the area, though she never disclosed how many. It was always an unstated number. Well, let's see what information is available under Freedom of Information. 
From September 2008 to October 2009, the Great Western Ambulance had just one call out for a fall there and the ambulance was cancelled before it arrived. In the five financial years from April 2004 to March 2009, there were just six compensation claims for falls anywhere in the high street and just three of them were in the vicinity of Wildings. No compensation was paid out and that, I suggest, is because the pavement simply was not that uneven. In fact, compensation was paid for pavement falls in South Gloucestershire, showing that elsewhere was more dangerous. If you saw my other video, you will know that the spineless Jerry Dickhead Dicker had been adamant in his support of the campaign against the tree's removal. Then, after a meeting with the council's tree officer and the head of street care, Dickhead completely changed his position and spoke for the removal of the trees. If you go to Dickhead's business website, you will see that in his list of clients is South Gloucestershire Council. And you can make of that what you will. To me, he sent details of people he claimed to know that had fallen on the alleged uneven pavement, including an unnamed friend, Sue Aitken, she of Thornbury and Bloom, and Councillor Claire Fardell, another anti silver birches local politician. Fardell was the councillor who made the bizarre claim that the trees hid the front of the Wildings building. The other councillor, Councillor Tyrell, also claimed that the trees had a bad effect on the fabric of shop buildings, meaning Wildings ornaments. Dickhead, when he defended the trees, claimed that the council had caved in to Wildin's demands. Apparently, the council has vehemently denied this. Well, we all have our ideas about the truthfulness of politicians. Interestingly, Wildings now retract the awnings when the shop is closed. It did not used to do that. And when the shop is open, the awnings are extended. Hey! Those are new awnings, with a new font for the name and omitting the fact that the business was established in 1874. So now you see something else. New awnings, no trees. Awnings retracted when the shop is closed. So. I think it is reasonable to assume the following. Wildings planned to change the awnings and wanted the trees out of the way. That is why the trees were removed during adverse weather conditions, even though hardly a priority for the council at that time. Wildings never attracted its old awnings because it had no interest in maintaining them and their condition allegedly proved the damage caused by the trees so this alleged damage was kept on display at all times. Now that they have new awnings and there is no risk from aphid honeydew or any such alleged nonsense, the awnings are attracted when the shop closes. So was it a wish to show Council's commitment to the nationwide Liberal Democrat campaign on pavement maintenance and compensation payments as I suggested in my original video or was it caving in to demands from Wildings, as Dickhead originally suggested? I don't know, but if this tree is still standing in 12 months time, for me it will definitely prove the Wildings theory. Whatever the outcome, I will not make any more purchases from Wildings. Dickhead said it would be a tragedy if Wildings closed the store. Personally, I can't wait for them to leave Thornbury. <laughs>